I've been talking shit on a lot of games recently. I've been talking shit about GTA 5. I've been talking shit about Ghost of Tsushima. I've been talking shit about Dark Souls. A lot of negativity recently. I think it's time for a bit of change this time around. For this video, I want to tell you about a game I love, and that's the new Astrobot game. When I first played the tech demo for the PS5 back in 2020, I had a lot of fun. The levels were fun and upbeat, the references were cool, and the haptic feedback was amazing. Even though I platinumed it on release, I never thought I wanted more. When the new game was announced as a one more thing at the latest state of play, I thought to myself, well, that was a pretty shitty showcase. But after seeing so many people talk about this game, I couldn't help but check what the hype was all about. And holy, I'm glad I did because this was the most fun I've had with a game that's come out this year, and I've played them all. Every level is just as fun and cheery as the last game, but there's so much more here. The level design and creativity is awesome. Team Asobi is seriously reaching 3D Mario heights with this one. There's so many mechanics or power-ups you'll use a couple of times and never again. It doesn't do the same thing. Every level feels like a whole new game. This level slow-mo casino is crazy. Everything is going super fast so it gives you this time stopper power, and with this, you can see things in a new perspective. Make platforms out of chips, the whole time colors blasting in your face, and Astrobot never dwells on it. It gives you all this goodness, and 10 minutes later it says, okay, next level, where well, there'll be a whole new vibe. The lesser game would have taken this great idea like a crazy casino in slow-mo and made a whole world out of it, but Astrobot just keeps moving you along at a breakneck pace. In a year for slow games, it makes you happy every second of playing. So many awesome levels, the beach one, construction, Japan, the boss fights are so creative and cartoony, the music is so catchy, and every level I find myself humming the beat, no matter how long I was stuck in it for. Afterwards I'll be singing it down the street, I'm singing it while I'm writing this damn video. I wish I could erase my memory and do it all over again. There's a lot of side content too, like the mystery levels and challenge levels. I love the mystery ones, but the challenge levels are kinda crazy. They start off slow, but when you get to the third round they say, fuck you, you're in my world now. What sick fuck came up with the idea for this lava level? There's a lot of other side stuff too. Astrobot will often reward you for exploring the world it created, but the level design is only half of it. The other half is the references. If you know me, you know I'm a sucker for fan service. I'm the guy jumping out of a seat when Cap catches Thor's hammer in Endgame. Spoiler warning, by the way. I love all the deep cuts in here. You can really tell the dev team loves PlayStation through and through, and they reward you for your love of it. Hidden in every level, there's a bunch of bots you have to rescue, and some are skins of PlayStation characters. Once you find them, they come to your island and stand around. And if you unlock their extra set piece, they'll be doing something cool, and if you hit them, they have a quirky little reference. I loved going from level to level unlocking all the characters, then getting enough money to win their stuff in the gacha game. It's so satisfying to fill up my world with all these characters, and they have everyone in here. That's Stranding, Crash Bandicoot, Snake, Fall Guys, Hano with Tom, fucking Knack. I was surprised the PS5 had enough power to run his graphics. Building up my island is a lot of fun, but the most fun for me had to have been the character levels, specifically God of War and Uncharted. The excitement I felt when Nathan jumped out of that chest and I realized I was going to get to play an Uncharted level. If the rest of the game has love put into it, this has even more. These levels are filled with references and callbacks. You've got Little and Big Yorman Gunder, the U-Boat, hidden loading screens, all the characters, Odin's Ravens. I was smiling ear to ear while playing these levels. I wish they never ended. Hell, I wish the whole game never ended. The only reason I stopped playing was because I got the platinum for it. I did everything. Even though I've been non-stop praising it, there are some things I would like for the next game when it hopefully releases. I know the character levels are tailored to the fans of them, and if you're not, it's really not for you, but some of them are just odd. Ape Escape is okay, but what the hell is this level? Am I dumb? I've never seen this anywhere. And come on, Horizon for the last level? I was expecting to get a big blowout finish. I know it's the highest selling PS exclusive, but how many of those people can say that they love it? I feel like they should have switched up the order a bit and put something more exciting last. Again, it's probably because I'm not a fan of some of the series, but I'm not sure. Also, I think in the next game they could have more game-focused levels. There's a lot of new themes Astrobot brings to the table, and I love them all. But it would be cool to see more levels be set in the world of certain games. You can still have unique mechanics and enemies, and it doesn't have to be every level. But it can make it really special for those who aren't a fan of any of the character levels they already have. Like a Ratchet and Clank level and a Ghost of Tsushima level. Because there were some properties in here I feel that were a little underappreciated. Like how Joel and Ellie were just in some cave level. They could have had their own character level with how big the last of us is nowadays. But I also understand that Naughty Dog already got one. 
My last critique is the outfits. There's not a lot and most of them are pretty basic and aren't associated with any specific game, like a bunch of sportswear. The game related ones are cool, but I feel like they prioritize some weird ones. Again, probably just preference, but I feel like they definitely could have gone wild with all sorts of referential outfits. I know I said it was going to be positive, but it's just so close to being perfect. In the face of what the game does right, these are minor complaints, and I'm so excited for this franchise going forward. And before I wrap this up, I've got to talk about the ending. When he pressed that button and the PS start sound played, something started happening to me. The whole end sequence is what the game has been building up to, and it's so exciting to see all the bots he rescued race around in different consoles and devices. What a special moment. This game was an absolute blast, and my favorite game that's come out this year. Yes, including whatever you're going to suggest in the comments. Better than them all. Sometimes we just need a game without any frustration. A game that gives us a great time start to finish. And if you love games, you'll love this one. Astrobot gets an A.